one. Um, yes, like I'm you. just the other day and getting off the session. Very excited. So, just... someone's not muted. Thanks, Maura. Can you? Yep, I'll mute them all. Awesome. Sorry, I'm back on. I just had to send some text messages. Uh, let me just cancel that and I'll try and mute Nicole. Okay, everyone should be muted now. Hey, Olson, can you please spotlight me too, Moira? Yeah. I've actually changed my kitchen around today. I always do things differently. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it just changes things up a bit. So um, welcome, everybody. Welcome to My Kitchen in Q. My name is Amanda Cook. I am the... Well, I'm a team leader, but essentially what I love is a Thermomix. I've been around Thermomix for 10 years. All the gorgeous ladies on here with me today are in our team, Team Shine. And I'm going to put it out there today that we are the number one team in Australia, New Zealand, nearly for the third year running. So proud of that. It's not about me. It's all about the girls and what we've created um, and all you awesome customers that have come online to join us today. For the past seven months, we have been living in this COVID space um, of virtual cooking experiences. Who knew we could do that and that it would you sort of translate so well um, to our kitchens when we we'll normally be doing these at the office. So I've loved, I've loved what we've created. Um, we've connected with so many people, not just existing customers, but you know, I can't even, I don't even know the number of new customers that have joined us since um, April, but I know there's many on here today. And I also know there's many customers that have joined us who've literally come to every single um, virtu virtual cooking class that we've run since April. So I really wanna thank you also for joining us. So I feel like we've been doing something right because we've got you guys coming back. Maybe you'll like the groupies, we'll call you the groupies. <laughs> so today, um, the class we're running is the um, blade cover. So we're using this awesome blade cover. I know hands up or pop it in the chat box if you've managed to get yourself one of these because supposedly this is the most coveted and um, wanted accessory in the Thermomix world. So if you've got one of those, um, fantastic. And I guess that's why you've joined us today. However, don't be alarmed if you don't have one, um, they will be back in the mix shop. I know they're currently out of stock. However, also the other way to get your hands on a blade cover essentially is to have your own cooking experience with your consultant. And this can be a host reward, a free host reward if you have a little purchase at your um, online demo. Um, and there's other four other options on the host rewards as well. So we'll be using the blade cover today, as well as slowing, showing the slow cooking function and the sous vide function using this little gizmo, you know, hands up if you've got one of these, but this is now our new, um, another accessory that we have on the mix shop. And I love it because it's all about being able to cry that food. Now for people who've done that in the past, um, used to use these big sort of contraptions. Hang on, Amanda, we can't see you. You've got your photo up again. Um, you oh, so can other. you tap my photo? Cause it's my screen, cause it's um, disappeared. Just tap it. Are we back there? No, you're back at your photo, Amanda. Okay, oh, there you go. two secs. Oh, no, we're good. Okay. Oh, there we are. Let me pin that one again. <laughs> That's the beauty of working from kitchens, and we're not trained in this area. We don't have directors, but all of us behind the scenes are looking after each other. So I was talking about, is that all good, Moira? And everyone? It's better now, yeah. Yeah, cool. We were talking about um, privating, so um, it's a great way for people that are looking at zero wasting. So you can, you know, be purchasing meats and proteins and vegetables all in a bulk uh, situation. And as I was about to say that, you know, prior to that, we used to have these really big cumbersome machines that look sort of like those um, laminators. Whereas now we've, with the mix shop, we have these awesome um, bags that you can buy in packets of 20, like so, and you can get your hands on one of these little... Um, vacuum seals as well, which is what I'm going to do when I do my steak dish today. So um, as I said, um, get ready for an hour of power. We've got lots of hints and tips to show you. Um, and I guess without further ado, really want to introduce the team. So you'll see them all online today, well, half the team. Um, we first are going over to Maura's Kitchen, who's going to show us how to use chickpeas. So to soak chickpeas in the Thermomix and then to cook them. And she's going to um, also offer us a beautiful uh, slow cook curry. Then we'll be coming back to me. I'll be doing the sous vide steak um, and then we'll take it away from there. You all should have your recipes on the cookie do. So while we're promoting our classes, our consultants send out the screenshots of the cookie do playlist. And um, you know, that's what we're promoting as we go along. And then if you, you want to follow us, jump into your cookie do and follow the recipe. So over to you, Moira. Thanks everyone. Thank you. 
Um, and I'll just try and, Amanda, you might need to spotlight. Here we are. Yeah. Here we are. Here we are. Hi, everyone. I'm Moira, and welcome to my kitchen in Ashburton. Um, I love the blade cover. I reckon it's the best invention since the Thermomix. It's taken them 50 years to come up with the, uh, the design. And yeah, if you can get your hands on one, please do. Um, the blade cover, I've got two here, but this one is a little bit minced. Um, it's really important that you don't go over speed one using it. I was doing a demonstration, forgot that I'd put it in, went to cook my family meal and turned the speed up to about four or five and it makes a really horrible noise. So please remember I need to go on speed one and it goes on reverse. It's suitable for the TM5 and the TM6, which is great. Um, you've got these little clips and you just pop it simply on top of the blade. So I'm going to cook some um, chickpeas in the Thermomix. But firstly, a little bit about the chickpeas um, and why I love it. Three of my, or 50% of my family, three of my children became vegetarian over COVID. Um, so chickpeas has been sort of a lifesaver in our family as well, just to bulk up their food also. You can buy them in cans and you can buy them organically in cans, but often the cans are lined with plastic. Um, and of course that will leach BPA into the food. Um, if you don't know what that is, Google it. It's not very good for you and has been linked to cancer. The recipe asks for 250 grams of chickpeas and that's 250 grams of chickpeas dry. So the beauty of um, using um, fresh chickpeas is they're much cheaper. Um, I'm also into zero waste. So uh, you don't even have the can to dispose of either. You need to soak the chickpeas overnight. So there's an example of the, the soak chickpeas. So please don't be encouraged to put more. They're, it's like rice and they will double or increase in size even further when you cook with them. And so you can see the difference. This lot's been actually cooked. So I've got the three sizes there. Um, but simply follow the steps. So on the TN5, you can cook the chickpeas, but it only goes up to 90 minutes and then you have to go for another uh, 30 minutes. On the TM6, you can cook them for two hours. Sometimes that might even be still too hard for you. So you can increase the time if you want to make hummus out of your chickpeas, but simply add the dried soaked chickpeas into your Thermomix and soak with water overnight. Um, and to get them going, I'll put the blade cover in and I'll just add my litre of water. and simply turn it on. So it's become sort of a nighttime ritual for me now. I soak my chickpeas overnight, wake up in the morning and have my cup of tea. Oh, that's another thing I need to highlight for TM5 owners. If you're not onto it yet, that's the old measuring cup. And the new measuring cup has got these little feet on them. So when you flip your lid upside down after cooking, it doesn't pop off. So add your water. Press next. It says to add chicken stock or stock when you're cooking them. I don't put that in because that can make the chickpeas harder or uh, still firm. So I leave the salt out of it completely. Insert the measuring cup and cook that for 90 minutes. You'll hear, it makes noise, but don't worry about it. It does settle down in time as well. What do you do with your chickpeas? You can use them in soups. I sometimes poke them with, um, you know, of spices and get going with that. I'm just going to make a quick little curry here. So um, this has also been a lifesaver, feeding the kids. Chickpea curry and press start cooking. A lot of the ingredients um, I use are fresh rather than the can. So it asks for 800 grams of canned tomato. I've just chopped up fresh tomato here as well. It asks for uh, powdered turmeric. So again, these are the little hints and tips. You can, you can change the recipes. It asks for a teaspoon, so just a teaspoon of turmeric. It asks for a powdered chilli. My sister grows these amazing chilies, oops, and I just use fresh. So you can modify the recipes. Um, so adding the four garlic cloves and the onions and the fresh ginger. And some olive oil. Again, the measuring cup, use those rather than having another dish to wash. That's got 50 grams of olive oil there. 
Pop that in. And pop on next. Insert the measuring cup. I'm just going to cook this now. Um, and the chickpeas are cooking. Uh, and we'll come back afterwards and I'll show you what the curry looks like. So we'll pop back to you, Amanda, and introduce the next chef. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, sure. Sorry. If anyone's got any questions, please ask them in the chat box as well. Yeah, awesome. So um, if you can spot my, spotlight me, please, Maury, that would be ace. Um, so what I'm going to do with today is a sous vide steak. So with the beauty of um, doing these virtual classes, we've decided, because these some of these recipes are slow-cooked recipes, we'll start them in one kitchen and then we'll go over to another kitchen and you'll see the finished product. So normally this recipe would be two hours. But um, as we said, the beauty of this is that we've got that all done for you. So the sous vide steak, I love it. We've got two pieces of, um, I've got scotch fillet steak here. Going to Man, pop it I in. Don't, I don't have you spotlighted on my um, screen. I've got a photo of you. I'm not sure if everyone else has got that. Okay, just let me two sec. I really should have. Can you I've got you. Is that good? I've got full screen, Amanda. Yeah, full screen. Thanks, guys. Um, okay, so simply, um, I've got two pieces of uh, steak. No, Amanda. Sorry, it's still not working. Oh, there. All good. Yeah, it's yeah. good now. Yeah. Yay, yay, yay. So I'm just salting and peppering my um, scotch fillet steak, both sides. Just let me give that a clip. You'll notice that I've got the mini. How cute is this little, little mini rose gold baking tray? Can't tell you how many times I use this. So we just need to salt and pepper that too. Has anyone tried this at home? I really love to hear who's actually given this a go and just thought to themselves, oh my God, because it just, these sort of recipes are what, you know, chefs talk about. And when you start doing these yourselves, you just realise that with a thermomix and in your own kitchen, you really can be, be anything. Huh? So I'm just going to pop these into the bag. Now these bags are reusable, so we have sort of thought to ourselves that we wouldn't reuse them for meat. So I think that's probably a good, would you say that team, wouldn't use them for meat? I'm just going to pop in some garlic. No, I wouldn't some... reuse it. Raise it for me. Got some rosemary and also um, got some beautiful lemon thyme that I'm going to pop into the bag as well. Okay, so that just goes in. And I know they look traditionally like a Ziploc bag. You'll notice with these ones that they're just a little bit more heavy duty. And so I'm just sealing it now. So we're just doing a little seal on here. There is a little clip that comes in with your bags and it sort of looks like a paper clip. But you just run it along that bag there just to take out any of the um, any air and to really give that a good seal. And now the magic of the bag is this little gizmo here. So I've recharged it. So it does come with a little recharging um, station. You see this little hole here? You just pop that over the end and you just pop it. And it just takes the air out of the bag till it's all sealed. And it's and it is rechargeable, so just pull it fully over that little circle there. There it goes. Okay, so all done. Smile. Okay, so that's that one done. You can imagine though when you've got, um, when you buy from the market and you can just really set these up and put them in um, your freezer or your fridge. I got some salmon today, some chicken, so I'm really going to give this a good go. I'm on a sort of a cry vetting bit of a frenzy this week. Okay, then um, let me just jump into the recipe because of course I've just done that all um, manually at the minute, but that's what the recipe says for us to do. Um, jump into um, my recipes. Where have we gone there? Bookmark. And what we need to do is we need to just add some water. So it's going to heat up the water for 15 minutes on 55 degrees. We put the blade cover into the Thermomix bowl, just like Moira's done. And it, um, she did say it goes between the two high sides of the blade. So on it goes there. And I'm just pulling up my recipe. Sometimes I work quicker than the cookie do. That's just me. But um, and because I had a practice of the recipe. So here it is here. And I don't know what the lighting's like, but if you can't see it, that's, sorry about that. Okay, so it says here, fill it in the bag. Place steak into the sous vide bag. Insert the blade covers, we've done that. Um, add, add the water. So we need about two litres of water going into the bowl. 
Now, another tip, and I didn't know about this till I read the tips, was um, they asked you to put a squeeze of lemon into the water, and that's because the water is, um, for, the, for the water bath, it's cooking for that two hours and a bit, so it protects your, the bowl, the seal in your bowl. So that's, it's not for flavour or anything like that, but it's more like a protection um, for your blade so that you don't get any rust. So isn't that a great tip? I'm just putting some more water in there. Okay, and then we're going to submerge the bags. Now, another tip, if you don't have the um, privating little machine, what you can do, the traditional way is to, have you ever seen it where they just put the meat into the bag, they seal it, and you start dipping it into a bowl of water and it actually pushes the air out and then you can sort of bring it to the top. So just have a look at that on Google, something that I learned, which I thought was really amazing. Um, and there goes the lemon juice in and... So what I won't do is I won't heat the water up today because we actually are going to go over to Jen's uh, kitchen, but I'll just pop the bag in like so. And now you could do two bags. So I can easily do two, two um, four fillets in there. Probably even I could fit potentially three bags in there. Just going to pop the lid on. And this is going to slow cook or slow cook in the water bath for 15 minutes, 55 degrees on speed one. And then, um, I'll restart it again and it'll be about 2.5 hours, but that's why we won't be waiting for that. You'll be ready for dinner by then. So at this point, I think, um, any questions up there? Anyone got any questions? I bet this you will start, you want to run out and start buying these, I know. But yeah, what was that, Moira? This was asking about the blade cover. When you are using the recipes on Cookadoo, it will automatically pop it in reverse. But your blade cover, when you purchase it, does come with an instruction manual, and I do recommend everyone read it. And you'll see on page 18, it said the speed must not increase above speed one, and it may only be used in ro reverse rotation. So yes, it's always is on reverse when using the blade cover if you are doing re recipes manually. Yeah, that's absolutely right, Maura. The other thing is that um, we've had a lot of people ask about the, it's got like a, li a little clicking, not, not much, but they're just, the blade cover turns around, it's normal. So it's just, it's just as long as it goes slow. When people turn it up to speed two to three, which is not recommended, you're gonna get a lot of sort of clicking of the, the blade, but it's just on, um, you know, speed soft or speed one, it's just gonna be really, really gentle. But anyway, um, hey, we are now gonna zoom over to Jen. Are you ready for us to show us what's going on with your steak, Jen? I'm just gonna spotlight you. And you get to do the real fun part, which is show us the finished product. So over to you, Jen. <laughs> Hi everyone. So um, I've actually used the TM5 um, with this particular res recipe and so this is the steak finished so I've cooked that for about 90 minutes. So we just bring that out, um, discard the, the herbs or whatever you've added to it and I'm just going to pop that on some paper towel um, just, just to let that rest as well. Um, it's always good to rest your meat prior to cooking. And then we'll get on to the next stage, which is the Bernay sauce. So I'm just clicking on next. I've taken out my um, blade cover and we've emptied the bowl. So we're just adding some echelots and some tarragon into the bowl. I'll just click on next. And then we'll just give that a, a chop for five seconds. down the side. Another really great tip for the measuring cup is to actually, if you if you have the measuring cup off, you can just put your spatula on top of it on the bench, just in case you know you've used made something that, that you don't want to touch the bench. That's that's another way of, of protect you know um, yeah keeping your bench clean anyway, just in case you didn't know that. So we'll just break down the sides and we'll click on next. And we're adding some dry white wine, 50 grams of that. Um, we've also got a teaspoon of white wine vinegar. And we're just putting that on. Now that's going to cook away for five minutes. So whilst that's cooking, I'm going to, um, am I going to do the steak yet? No. <laughs> Do you want me to cook the steak now, Amanda, or? You're going to see the steer the steak in the pan? Yes. 
Yeah, sure. Let's quickly you want me to do that. Okay. Yeah, so that so that's a little recommendation in the recipe is that when it comes out of the um, when it's being sous vide, you just give it a light sear on in a pan just to give it that lovely uh, pan seared finish. But then you've got that beautiful cutting and um, you know smoothness of the steak. Go, Jen. <laughs> Yeah, so another really great recipe, um, so this one's got the Bernays sauce, but there is another recipe on Cookadoo called the rare beef with the um, the herb butter, which is absolutely delicious. Highly recommend that too. But the steak is so soft, um, absolutely delicious when you uh, when you bite into it. So it's a highly recommended dish to make. So I'm just going to heat up my pan. I just want to make sure that I get that nice and hot. You want that nutty butter happening, don't you, Jen? Put in a little bit of butter, um, so it won't be a minute. So I'm, I'm actually just going to serve this with some asparagus on the side. You can also have a nice salad as well to serve in the middle of the table. Um, but I'll just get that hot. So what you've got going is the sauce and the thermic, so using just, yep. Yep, so I've got the Bernays sauce cooking away. Um, I've still got to add some butter and egg yolks in that. Um, and then we'll serve that as a side with the actual steak, which would be really nice. This is the box that the um, that vacuum sealer comes in, which, is, as Amanda said, a really great tool. You can also use some, some of the, um, the BPA plastic-free bags and, and do the, the method that, will, um, that you can pop in the water um, to make sure that you take out all of the air from the bag. Now, that's going to be nice and warm. Let's put that in. We've got a little green button down here. Most of you may, may know that in the team five, but we can actually view the full recipe. So if we're looking to see what's, what's coming up next and how long before we go, we can have a look at that too and then click on the top to continue just to see where we're at. Okay, so that's just a So it doesn't have to be long, just 40 seconds on each side. That's cooking nicely. You can see what the bag looks like after you've cooked with it. Again, I, I would, wouldn't recommend using it again. I'll, I'm just going to put that in the rubbish. Um, okay, that looks good. So depending on how well you like, you like the steak, but that's the, the steak cooked. Smells delicious. Um, I think the trick's oh. going to be when you cut it with that beautiful knife through the middle. Oh, there, oh. tell me about it. Yeah, absolutely. You guys been waiting for lunch, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, what have we got? We've still got a little bit of time here. Do you want me to zoom away and we'll come back to yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, that might be an idea. All right, okay, just give me two sets. Um, I was just going to ask if, um, Maura, do you need us for anything? Hi, Maura, do you need us for anything? No, keep on going. No, good. All right, Chris. Um, I'm right for over to you, Beth. We're going to have a look at the start of, this is one of my favourite right. recipes. In fact, I think they're all my favourite recipes, but um, this is the start of the slow-cooked pork, um, and they'll be ending up in the beautiful brioche bun. So thanks for joining us today, Beth. And... Um, what I want to acknowledge is that Beth is a new consultant with us and this is the first time she's joined us in um, a team cooking experience. But I feel like that's not true because you've been with us for months now and we've been doing this all along. So over to you, Beth. Mm -hmm. oh, thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining me in my kitchen in Hawthorne East this afternoon on this sunny Sunday afternoon. I'm going to be starting off the slow cooked pulled pork this afternoon and um, the reason we love slow cooking is because it does a couple of things. It keeps all the nutrients in the food. It um, 
it uses less electricity than an oven. It keeps um, cheaper cuts of meat really tender. So you can use, you know, flank steaks and all of that sort of thing and have it quite tender because of the slow cooking process. And it also allows all the flavours to develop. And, you know, if you layer the flavours in your food and allow them to develop over a few hours, then you'll have a really tasty meal at the end of it. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about cooking from scratch because I love the way the Thermomix allows us to cook from scratch. And this recipe uses barbecue sauce. And there is a recipe in um, Cookie Do for barbecue sauce, which is much better than, than buying it um, at the supermarket and having sauces full of sugar and salt and what have you. You know exactly what's going in it. No preservatives, low sugar, and you can leave it salt free if that's what you need to do because you've got that dietary requirement. But anyway, let's get started on the pulled pork. So I'll just turn this around so you can see my screen. Um, first of all, oh, hang on. of course my thermomix wants to shut down now. It's been sitting here waiting for so long. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to let it and then turn it back on again. Sorry about that. This recipe is from the American collection of the sous vide, uh, not sous vide, slow cookbook. And, um, and the, re the way you find that is to just uh, Google, uh, search in the cookie do bar pulled pork and then turn the filters off for Australia so that you can um, find the recipes from other countries and, and, um, and you might choose to do those instead. I've chosen to do that today just because it just looked like a nicer recipe. And it's, giving me all sorts, taking me through the safety instructions. And this is using up a bit of time, isn't it? Okay, so I've already saved this recipe in my week, which is a good feature of Cookie Do. You can do meal planning and then save it into your weekly planner on Cookie Do, and it will um, keep all the recipes that you want to cook for the week in there. You can generate shopping lists from it. Um, send those shopping lists to your husband or partner and get them to pick things up from the supermarket for you, which is something I like to do because I hate going to the supermarket. Um, so here's the pulled pork buns that I'm going to do. We're going to start cooking. And it just says to ensure the success of slow cook rep recipes, use the exact amount of meat and liquid. And that's just so you don't end up with a whole lot of liquid left at the end and tough meat. So our next step is to place two garlic cloves into the bowl. Now garlic, uh, there's a bit of a trick with Thermomix for um, peeling garlic. You can put, um, you can uh, separate a whole bulb, put the whole bulb, bulb into the Thermomix and put it on reverse speed for all the shells come off it. And then you just pick the shells out, out of it and you can store those in the fridge in an airtight container. Um, so it's going to chop this up. So we're just inserting the measuring cup into the mixing bowl. Next, turn the speed selector to speed seven, and it's sort of got that highlighted for you. So we move it around to speed seven. Just going to chop the garlic for a few seconds. And then when it chimes, we go next. And now it's asking us to insert the blade cover. So I'm actually just going to uh, scrape down the sides of the bowl a little bit so that the garlic's not all over the sides of the bowl. Now the blade cover has two sides to it. It's got this side with the big um, things that go down between the blades and this side. So just make sure you pop the blade in, blade cover in on the right way around. It can only go in one way. Um, next, we're going to add our boneless pork shoulder. Um, I've actually used uh, pork neck uh, because it comes as a boneless piece and it's a really good meat for um, slow cooking. So we're just going to pop all that in to our bowl. How much is in there, Beth? How much pork neck? It's my hand. So the recipe asked for um, 28 ounces in the US recipe, but it's about 800 grams that I've got in there. So I'm now using a stylus too, which is available on the mix shop because I've just got meat on my hands. Um, now four ounces of yellow onions, and that's because this is an American recipe, which is about 120 grams. So I've just got that pre-done. It's asked it for it to be sliced into half moons. And that's because this isn't going to get chopped again. So it's just going to stay like this for the, for the recipe. And that's how we want to present it at the end with the onions in, in pieces like that. 
Next, one sprig of fresh rosemary, leaves only. So we've just got that going in. Next, eight ounces of water, which is about uh, 200 grams. So that's going in too. Next, six ounces of apple cider vinegar. So that's about 170 grams. And one teaspoon of vegetable stock paste. So this is one of the items, the ingredients that I was talking about before that we cook from scratch. So all of us consultants and probably all of you who've had a Thermomix for a long time would have vegetable stock paste on hand all the time. Um, it's great to have it in the fridge to add flavour and, and um, to, to lots of dishes. So there's one teaspoon of that going in. Next, we've got half a teaspoon of salt to taste. Um, so I'm going to use a whole half a teaspoon. And next, 12 ounces of barbecue sauce. And this is the other ingredient that I've cooked from scratch today too. So I know how much sugar and salt we're getting. And also I know it's got lots of flavour and we all like a little bit of spice here so I can add a bit of extra Tabasco into the recipe um, so that we get it a little bit more spicy than what you would have a normal barbecue sauce from the supermarket. <clears throat> and we go next. Now we're going to insert the measuring cup into the mixing bowl lid. I love how cookie dough is like karaoke for cooking. It just tells you everything every step of the way so kids can even do it and um, very easy to cook like a chef. So now we're just going to start that slow cooking process. And I just also want to show you a couple of things that I use when I'm cooking from scratch. And one of them is this, which is the jam funnel. So if I'm making... Um, vegetable stock paste, sauces, uh, jam, any of those sort of runny um, things. If you sit the, the jam funnel over the jar that you're going to be decanting into, it stops it off from splashing out everywhere. So they're available in the mix shop. And the other thing that I use a lot when I'm cooking from scratch is the nut milk bag. So that just sits inside your um, steamer basket, the one that sits into your machine. And you can use that to strain um, ricotta, labna, um, all your nut milks, um, that sort of thing. So if you like cooking from scratch and knowing what you're eating, these are a couple of items that you could use. Oh, I love both those items, mm -hmm. Beth. Thank you. That's all right. <laughs> so how long does that cook for now? It... Uh, this cooks for four, it's four and a half hours now. There you go. So with so the, the magic of technology, we can go Correct. to Christina and see it already done. That's right. So thank yeah. you, Beth. Um, yeah, we will. We'll jump over to Christina's kitchen. Just let me give her a bit of a spotlight. And um, um, let's Amanda, see I've just got a couple up. of questions. Oh, yes. Go for it. Questions on, people have asked about the, the measurements. So if you're using mm -hmm. a recipe from Cookadoo, the recipe that Beth's using is American, I think, Beth? Yeah. So it automatically changes it over. And I think once you're in that recipe, you just have to use the imperial or the mess, depending on what country you're in. Yes, I don't think do. you can change it over when you're in the recipe. So a couple of people have inquired about the recipe measurements. So if you're in America. Yeah. No, in fact, um, the only reason that I used it in grams was because I pre-prepared um, three weighed everything out to cook today but normally I'd be cooking that recipe as I was going along and I would just use the American, American measurements the machine will weigh that for you and there's a yeah. little banner that comes up at the bottom of the recipe when you start it saying empirical measurements used switching temporarily to empirical me measurements so you can measure easily in the machine and then it That's switches it back yeah we just love that feature though it's so great having that um, on there to be go between the two measurements um all right, let's jump over to uh, Christina and see what's happening with the finished product with the fork and, um, and the brioche bun. So thanks, Chris. Hello. Hi, I'm Christina. I'm from Glen Iris. So I have been cooking for four hours and 30 minutes. There is two recipe in the pull pot buns in the cookie dough as well. So just a little tip, if you are using the Australian recipe, it's actually asking 550 gram of water. So if that is just a little bit too much. Um, so you can um, reduce that down to 200, which is the same one as the one Beth is using. So you can see that this is um, the pot that's done. 
So now it's just asking me to strain it. So I have two bowls. So, um, so just take the, the meat up. As you can see, it's really, really soft now. It's just literally pull apart. Just like all good slow, slow cooked meat looks, hey, Christina. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like Beth mentioned, I'm using um, the recipe from the barbecue sauce from um, one of the recipe in there. And coming out to Christmas, um, that is a really great gift um, that you can think of, making a, just a homemade barbecue sauce to give it away to someone. And We'll be talking about Christmas gifts next and, and running um, probably some online or maybe at the office, some Christmas uh, gift making recipes. Correct. We and so this that. is my pork. So the good things with the 2BBL now, um, I can just pop this one in. So, um, and then put For those that pop. don't know, the BBL is a bowl blade and lid. So Chris has got two bowl blade and lids there. Um, and we can talk about that too shortly. No then it just asked me to pull back the two, two ounces of reserve cooking liquid, which is the one that I have here. Just tear it down to zero. And press next. So it's asking for an, um, six ounces of liquid, barbecue liquid again. So this is something that I pre-made. Um, so this is a giveaway, a barbecue sauce for Christmas idea if you want to. So you can always make it extra um, to give away. So this is six ounce. And just close the lid. And five second. Speed three. And it's asking you to do salt to season. So just have a taste of it and see how you like it first. Yep. So that's pretty much done. And I'll just quickly put this on. Well, I've made some brioche bun from the cookie dew recipe um, in the barbecue collection. So you can have them whether um, we have got a couple of um, family that doesn't like the seeds. So you can do it without the seeds. So basically the brioche buns that I bake it and then um, you can um, store them in an airtight container if you don't want to eat it now. So you can see that some of them with the seeds and some of them without the seeds. And I basically just brush it with egg yolk and a tablespoon of um, milk. And it has all that instruction in the, um, in the cookie dough recipe. So just quickly pull one out. I think you'll all agree that Chris is the queen of baking for others who have joined us before, but they almost look just too amazing, even more amazing than store-bought ones, Christina. Thank you. And then just Dress it up however way you want it. That's the shredded pork coming the out. The shredded pork the coming out. So one thing with good things um, with the Mamitsa and comb cook is you can just put as many as you like or as, um, as little as you want. So just a little veggie on the healthy side. And Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> there you are. There you go. So that's really easy. Do you do Uber Eats, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> we allowed the 25k now, so we definitely come that's around. Right. If you want to. Oh, my God. There you go. Oh, so I Jody need, we was... need to see a... oh, sorry. No, I just yep. need to see a lot of love in the chat box for that beautiful pulled pork, pulled pork bun burger. So well done to yourself and Beth. Thank you for showing us Thank that. You. Um, Maura, did you have something happening? Jodie would like to know where, uh, the, where you got the jars from for the barbecue sauce. Um, and Christina, how did you get the buns so perfectly round from Victoria? Oh. I've got a photo. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so basically the brioche buns, you just um, follow the recipe and when it comes out, um, 
I do have a little trick that I just started using it. Um, so what it is, um, you put it on the baking paper. So this is a self-made kind of like an aluminium foil with the height. And then you put a baking paper inside. And what it does is kind of like sits in here like this so that it bakes to the size that I want to, to bake. Just like that. Hey everyone, version. I hope you're writing that down everybody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it kind of sits inside now that because it's finished, but I did do one without it, um, without the aluminium foil. So you could see it's not much difference. Like it depends if you want a hamburger size, then you will do the aluminium foil with it. If you just want a normal one, um, it's, it's almost the same. There's just a little bit of height difference. Yeah, wow, well, I love that. Yeah. Um, and before car, we go, I always put in my, my bread in a car. This is a good day to put the bread in a car. <laughs> yeah, does everyone know that trick? So if, if it's, I mean, it's, the weather's lovely now, but if you need a nice warm spot to prove your bread, you just pop it into the onto the dashboard of your car because we know how how, how the cars love to generate all that heat. So I love that tip as well. Hope you wrote that one down. <laughs> that was beautiful, Christina. Thank you Thank so you. much. Um, Maura, how are your how are your chickpeas going? Do you need us at this point? Hello, Moira. Maybe not. Um, okay, let's see if we're, I think she might have dropped out. I'm sure she'll come back shortly. Okay, are we ready to have a look at the miso aubergine? This is another one of my absolutely favourite dishes in the Theramix. And we are starting off with Adrienne. So let's just give me, let's pass the spotlight over to her. And Adrienne, Hello. thank you very much. Nice to see you. <laughs> Um, yeah, today I'm going to be making the miso eggplant. Um, it's pretty quick at the beginning. We just make the marinade and then we have already um, chopped up my eggplant and popped it in the vacuum seal bag. Um, and I've already put in my blade cover in my separate bowl with the lemon juice, but I'll just show you what goes into the marinade. So it's asking us for 90 grams of white miso. This one in particular, the Genmai Shiro. Do you use a lot of miso, Adrienne? Um, I have been a lot more lately. Um, you yeah, can even put not... it into you can put it into salmon into your into your fry batter bags as well, which is really nice. Uh, the next. Ingredient is 40 grams of mirin. And then 35 grams of sake or water. Well, I ended up getting cooking sake um, because I didn't want to buy um, a whole bottle from Dan Murphy's. But online it just said that cooking sake has a bit more salt to it than the actual alcohol sake. So it's 35 grams. And then 30 grams of sugar. I'm just going to use coconut sugar. Um, a teaspoon of sesame oil, so we just guess. Two pinches of salt. And we've popped the lid on and 20 seconds speed three. Um, I know some people don't like eggplant because they don't like the bitter taste, but um, one, if you get a fresh eggplant and the right size eggplant, it shouldn't be bitter. Um, some telltale signs if you're getting a good one that hasn't been sitting on the supermarket shelf for two weeks is that you want to get one that's probably a medium size. Not, it's not always larger. The larger, the better. And you want to make sure the skin is quite firm and shiny. So when it's starting to look a bit dull, well, it's probably starting to um, have a more of a bitter taste and um, it won't be as nice in your dish. So yeah, medium sized eggplant that is quite firm and has a shiny skin. So here is my 
mixed up sauce. So it just goes to the side. Then it's asking me to clean my mixing bowl, divide 360 grams of eggplant into my vacuum sealing bags, pop in the water um, and the lemon juice. What I like to do when I am um, usually with the sous vide recipes, it asks you to heat the water to um, the temperature that's asking, so usually around 80, 85 degrees. If I'm in a hurry, I um, just boil the water in the kettle. Then you don't have to wait for 15 minutes. Um, so you could have just boiled it before you started the whole recipe so it would be ready for you then. Um, but if you've got the time, it doesn't really matter. So I can skip the 15 minutes heating up my water and then it just asks me to place in my eggplant side by side, pop the lid on and then that will take two hours. But I think we're going to pop over to Sally and she can show you what the end product look like, looks like. We are popping over to Sally. So thanks for that, Adrienne. I'm really looking forward to seeing the end of this dish. Are you ready for us, Sal? I'm ready. Here she comes. <laughs> Oh, there you are. Hi. Hi. Um, hi, from Hawthorne. Also, we all seem to be around here. Welcome, everybody. I um, did the first part of this dish, and I did pretty much everything the way Adrian does, and I'm just going to put it out there that I've never sous vide before. Today was my first day, and I planned to get up early and give it a go, and I didn't. And I will say my heart raced a little bit as I got started and I pulled out my sous vide kit for the first time. And honestly, I can't tell you how easy it was. I was blown away. So I've got my little kit there. Uh, taking the air out of the bags was amazing. I even did one bag, which was what? super yeah, short. Yeah, he did it, please. And that's the plate, oh. Sorry. Uh, I did one bag that was so shrunk down and another bag that I actually let air out of the next bag because I just wanted to see what different effect I would get. And I can tell you it didn't make a big difference either way. It all turned out beautifully. So don't panic too much if it's not really tight or it is really tight. That was fantastic. And the only other thing um, I did as well is I did go and buy the sake. It's probably going to be absolutely horrible to drink, I'm sure, for, you know, it wasn't expensive, but... I just thought it might be interesting to try a different um, option. And I did Google and it did also say that you could use grape juice with water. So when you go through the recipe and you click through the steps, you actually see it says instead of sake, you can just add water. So if you don't want to go and buy the sake or the cooking sake, that's another option. Um, the only other thing I wanted to also make a tip was I probably didn't have as much water as I wanted in the Thermomix and I wanted to speed it up because I needed to catch up to the uh, estimated finish time today. So when I had to submerge my bags, they were, they were up a little bit and I, I did actually wonder what I was going to do to make sure they were below the water level. So. I, I'm curious to see what uh, Amanda or the other consultants might think. I actually put my lid in upside down because it just gave me that little bit more so it wouldn't float up. And when I put it on, it just, you know, you get that, you get that early noise of the blade and then it stops. So it seemed to work really well. When they came out, um, I did, it does say to use tongs to pull them out. I didn't find I needed to, but my recipe finished a little bit earlier than we were ready, so I did have to put it in the oven and I put the uh, beautiful marinade all over it, which has the most superb umami taste. I'm blown away by it. I know there's not a lot there because I've already dished one up, but I wanted to tell you, I just, once it got beautifully caramelized, just to hold it off from, from continuing to cook or dry out, I did actually cover it with a piece of baking paper and a uh, tea towel and the mixed towel, just to hold the heat in and keep it moist. And here is one I've um, done here. You see this one here, hopefully you can see. And I've got to tell you, I just uh, garnished with a little bit of spring onions and some toasted sesame seeds. I snuck a piece earlier because everyone was cooking and I could just taste it. It was amazing. So I will be doing this again. 
a couple of little tips I would say if you don't have a fresh lemon you could just keep some of that handy in the fridge uh, or the pantry and the sous vide bag I've got mine already drying just on top of my um, my Thermomix spatula in my basket so that will dry out there or I could use a, a clean towel to dry it out but I did see that coming, um, there are working on rewashable, completely reusable bags. And I know Thermomix is at the forefront of all of this. So I think if they do bring that out, we're going to see it first on Thermomix. So yeah, that's it for me. Oh, wow. So happy with that one, Sal? I, I'm, I'm loving it. I've actually got my mum outside. I know she's going to be wanting the other half of this. I think as a serve goes, um, that would be the other half in my dish, ready to dish into the bowl. You would do, you could do a really generous entree for two people, or if you wanted to, you could do a um, really four beautiful, I mean, bash, Japanese entrees are quite small, so you could do four little bowls as a starter. The only other thing I would say as well, rather than one big egg, you know, or a couple of one of the big, big eggplants, you could definitely also use those little Lebanese eggplants as an alternative. Oh, delicious. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Plus oh, I, I love that one. I had room for one more bag. I felt I could have done an extra bag in the Thermomix and increased that just a bit, but it was my first time. So really, okay. if I can do this, anyone can. <laughs> I love that, Sal. And you are in my neighbourhood, so you, I could be knocking on your door really soon. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, I think we might be ready for... How's everyone going with that, guys? I think there's been some lovely hints and tips and recipes today. Maura, are you ready for us with your chickpeas? Yeah, I have finished them. Oh, good. Over to you, Del. Mm. I have finished the recipe, so it's hot. I don't know if you can see that. I've popped it in the oval thermo server. So it's 2.6 litres of chickpeas. So it makes a very large serving. Um, just mm -hmm. make some sure. barn bread or something with that. It's a beautiful meal to have. It's sort of saved us. It's my, when I was in a hurry, I've got four kids. When I was in a hurry, I used to feed them a risotto. I can't even, <laughs> you know, I'm desperate if I make risotto in my family. So this has been my sort of my meal I often um, fry an egg and just add that on the top and sprinkle with parsley. So it's a really satiating meal. So, yeah, it's great. You are Amanda the queen of chickpeas. Too. Yeah, you are the queen of chickpeas. So I do love, and I just love that it's a simple oh, recipe. Right. And I know that you use it. So you normally put them on in the morning and then you will come back to them later. So like we do with these recipes, they're just slow cooking recipes. We're just seeing them quickly. So that's fantastic. Um, when they're, when they're, they're cooked, you can actually freeze them. So you yep. can freeze them in batches and then just take them out and thaw and use as, as you would. You can hear this in the background. So I had the curry in there. So the turmeric and the ginger and the garlic um, and the chilli. And the turmeric can stay in your lid. So I automatically, as soon as I finished, just popped a litre of water with a drop of um, detergent popped it on pre-clean function and it pretty much does it. I don't need to do anything else. It's um, an amazing new function that's only been introduced on the TM6 in the last two weeks. So the pre-clean yeah. function is awesome. I love that, Maura. Thank you. So um, before we, um, we've been looking at the chat box today. There's some lovely um, questioning going on there and we will answer all those. I just wanted to quickly jump in and just quickly share with you my cookie do screen. Just to show you, so today we've talked about um, sous vide cooking, slow cooking, and um, so it, the easiest way to find a recipe is, you know, you can either search for the recipe or just simply on your search line, put in the word sous vide. You'll find that uh, the recipes come up like so. And we've written the Australian cookie do, and here are our recipes here. So just a little tip, if you're wanting to look at a recipe via a collection, you can just use this section here, which is the recipe section, drop that box down into collections, and you'll see that the actually specific books, you know, come through there. So that's a really easy way as well. The other thing you can do is, as you can see, that we are in the Australian platform now for these, um, for these collections. And also we did, I know we had some five and six customers on today as well and some 31s, but you've got some recipe collections that are broken down specifically for your model. So always have a look at that. Um, and this, this one's great too, sous vide for two, because we're always talking about thermics and how great it is to feed a, you know, feed a crowd. 
and whoever came to our last um, online cooking class, which was cooking for a crowd, you know, we also want to think about our customers that are just the ones and twos that are using a thermix. So always have a look for the smaller collections um, because, you know, a thermix is for everybody. But um, what I did want to highlight was you can just click off if you're using your browser. So on your desktop, just by clicking off Australia here, it's going to open up into the World Wide Web of all the other recipe collections. And you can see that we jumped up there to 79 books. Now, I'm not multilingual, so I can't speak all those languages. So, of course, for me, I'm sticking to the Australian. So I either use USA, um, UK or the Australian platform. But I love that I can jump into all those other platforms as well. So I quickly showed you there how to look for your sous vide recipes, but if you're wanting to have a look at uh, some slow cooking as well, once again, remembering that not only can you search for a recipe, so if you're looking for your risottos and that sort of thing, you can always search for a function through the search bar there as well. So slow cooking has brought me up uh, the recipes, and there's there you go, there's the recipe, uh, the chickpeas that Maury did today, 1,379 recipes in the slow cooking um, Recipe Collection Australia and the filters, if we just, sorry, into the, into the uh, collections here, you'll see there's some slow cooking books and using the blade cover. So just, I think it's really important that you, you know, use that search function to, to make life easier for you. Um, and what, what else did we do today? So we did save our recipes in a collection. So you know that you can either bookmark the recipes or simply put them in a collection. So from that section there, you've got all created or saved. So if I'm looking for my recipes today and I've kept the collections going, they're under our VCE because that's how we, you know, use them for the class, the VCE blade cover. And these are all the recipes that um, we did today for you. So if you haven't saved them into a collection, um, your consultant can easily share them with you. We very easily share recipes. Did you know that you can just simply, um, if you're wanting to share a recipe, just use your three dots here or open up the recipe and you just share the link. So you probably see on our socials that we share recipes. So all we have to do is copy and paste that cookie do link there, like so, and then we can easily um, share that into our socials or a text or things like that. Now, people that, that are members will be able to open up directly into cookie do. If you're not a member, you will just get the front page. Um, and anyone that is on today that is not a cookie do uh, member, we gift you 30 days free to jump in and um, you can start having a look around, navigating around and having a look at all these recipes. So that's just a really quick, uh, brief little insight into Cookie Do. If you're wanting to, to learn more about that, um, our, our team runs a Cookie Do session once a month and we do have another session happening next week on Tuesday at 12 noon. If you don't know about that already, please ask your consultant and we'll send you the links through for those classes. Um, our next class coming up is going to be one of my favourites. It's going to be um, all about platters, so preparing for a seasonal platter. So we'll be doing four beautiful platters um, and showing you how you can use components of, you know, from your thermix to put those together. They are going to look amazing. Um, we're doing one all about poke bowls. So think of that as a, as a big platter. We'll be doing a standard cheese board, but we'll be giving it a thermomix uh, twist and a, you know, Shazam. So they look fantastic. We're also doing a beautiful vegetable platter and we're doing um, one of my favourites, uh, a pav platter with lemon curd and berries and all those sort of things as well. So four recipes, four platters that will take you into the into the next season for Christmas that's coming up. And, and you know, for seven months while we've been doing this, it's just hard to believe that Christmas is just around the corner. So, um, oh, yep. I just wanted to show, show you how much sauce we made out of the Bernay sauce from that dish. Oh, wow. Let me just uh, go back to you, please, Jen. Oh, wow, yeah, so, that. <laughs> so that, that you could pop in the fridge, but um, you would just have a little small serving um, with your steak, um, but it does make quite a lot. So, um, yeah, so that's probably about it. That's either late lunch or early dinner. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Yeah, is there any questions on that? Amanda, I just was thinking, I don't know what your thoughts would be on this, but... Um, I was taking a look at the friend, the Mimics friend coming, and mm -hmm. I was looking at this dish and contemplating that when the friend does arrive, anybody who loves sous vide is likely to be able to use the friend to cook at the same time as sous vide to get be able to sous vide and then jump, get it going and then jump straight into their next recipe, depending on, on what the uh, 
recipe is going to be. So the options of cooking a meal and preparing an absolute feast at the same time are just going to open up dramatically. It absolutely will sell, and, and that's oh, right. So when the friend comes, that'll be our focus for next year. So yeah, we can't we can't wait for that one. Um, so if there's any questions, um, please feel feel free to come off mute. Um, we're here till the end. I just wanted to share that um, for all of you that have been, um, let me just jump out there. For everyone that has been following us, we know that um, November is finishing with a real big bang. So um, if you ever wanted to get another Thermomix or you were going to gift a Thermomix to um, a family member, that this is the time now because we have got the second bowl and blade on offer for $99 as a, a special purchase bundle. All I can say is whenever we offer a, a, a BBL, whether it's um, a discounted one, host reward, it goes bunter out there. So we've had, um, crazily, we've hit all our targets and we only, it was only the 6th of November. So we, I think that's just amazing. So yeah, bowl blade and lid, it's actually going to sell out today or tomorrow. And then uh, Thermix has offered a $150 mix shop voucher for um, other customers who are purchasing uh, for the month of November. So they'll probably be on offer from tomorrow. However, there is a cost section at the moment. So as I said, I know most of you are here today already have a Thermomix, but if you've got some people in the wings who are looking at um, purchasing, definitely uh, the time is now. Um, let's talk about hosting your own cooking experience. So if you've loved what you see here today, it's all of the consultants online. I love having the support of the team. I find that it's great to see different presenters. Um, we'd love you to pop in the chat box to other classes that you might like to see. We're always planning and looking ahead. And I love that we can sort of really just do something that's seasonal for all of you. Um, so chat with your consultant. I know they're always, they'd love to jump online and do one-on-ones with you. And um, it's about that ongoing support that we, that, that you know, that, which is what we deliver and promise on as well. How about your host rewards? So not only is the blade cover on offer as a host reward, but um, it was refreshing this month as well. So we're offering the white thermo server. There's the mini thermo service. And we've done a price reduction on that second tier as well. So that if you're that uh, customer that loves to have, you know, multiple cooking experiences with your consultant, there's some lovely new options on offer and a lot more affordable too if you're just wanting to revisit that as well. Um, you can design your own menu. This is what it's all about too now. Remember for the people who've been around for ages, it used to be risotto and fruity dream and basic bread and that sort of thing. Literally now you can design your menu and um, that has been just so wonderful for all of us. So um, lots of great things being cooked and shared and, and functions being shown. And um, so that's, you know, jump into that world as well. Um, who else? Is anyone else on the chat box with me, guys? Anything specifically that you'd like me to answer? What time is the session on Tuesday? The session is 12 noon on Tuesday. So um, at the minute, I haven't put an evening session on, but um, if we need to, we can. But we, we can easily record it. But definitely, if you want to know more about Cookie Do, they're the sessions to come to. Um, what else is happening? The other sessions that are happening throughout the branch and with your consultants is the Easy Essentials class. Now, you will see that popping up two or three times a month. And it's really for new uh, customers to connect with your consultant and also to see a 40-minute session run on basic functions with your Thermomix. So it really kickstarts your journey off with your Thermomix as well. Um, what else? So is everyone had a great time today. Thank you so much for joining us. It was a nice quick hour, hour of power, one hour and 10 minutes kept on track. We've still got the afternoon to enjoy. And um, I'm going to yeah go back to the Brady Bunch screen, which we call the big screen. It's everyone's lovely faces. Love to hear some feedback. Can you see yourselves making those recipes? Yes, I can, can see. Can I just say how good here. this pork smells? Oh my <laughs> gosh, it smells so good. I'm standing here right beside it, it's like wafting up. It's beautiful. Uh, that's the mm. one thing that we can't do is that we, that we can't have um, while we're doing this class is, is our customers don't get to smell the food. But you know what? For a lot of my customers that are local, I've been dropping off uh, dishes at their front door. So we still have that option. If you're local to your consultant, there's nothing wrong with us giving you a little care package at your front door after having the demo too. So that's something that's lovely as well. Chickpeas are delicious. <laughs> are they, Moira? <laughs> mm. They're very nice. <laughs> are you talking about a date for four new dishes? There was something you were talking about. Someone just said something about four new dishes you were talking about. You mean for the platter class? Yes. Oh, yep. That's going to be on Saturday, the 28th of November. Sorry. Yeah, November. 
we were in November at 11 a.m. Mm. 11 a.m. So, Saturday the 28th of November. So um, that class will go live by uh, middle of this week. And once again, as we do, we'll share it with your consultants. We actually can't put our classes in a public space, mainly because um, we are a big team and our, we would just probably, we just would have too many people joining us. So we really have to keep our classes nice and tight and really um, invite our own customers to be joining us. We think we're a unique group um, and we really want to know who's coming online. So just for privacy as well, you know that you're always in, in a safe space and that you're all with we're all interconnected. So we are a team of about 28 consultants. We do rotate um, our presenters and we have, pres uh, you know, like we have consultants that are like brand new to the team and we have some others that have been with us for a long time. So you really get to see a lovely cross section of what we do because we all have our own superpower. How I cook is not going to be how Beth cooks. You know, Maura is very um, passionate about her zero waste cooking and we love that. Christine is the baker. Sally is, loves the cocktails. You always often find Sally doing a cocktail. But um, the thing is that with the Thermix, you can really be anything you want it to be. So we want to tailor make those classes and we want the consultants to share all that with you as well. Can I just ask what the Thermomix friend is? That's the first I've heard of. The yeah, friend. so they've been, who asked that question? I couldn't see that person online. It's Julie, Julie Pierce. <laughs> Hello, Julie. So the friend is coming next year. You, it, it's, it has been uh, promoted through the Thermix webpage, also through your newsletters. Basically what we're calling it, it's a, it's a hot plate for your Thermomix. So think of this, you've got one Thermomix in your kitchen and I know some customers do think about having a second Thermomix, which is, um, you know, we would all love to have two. So the friend is going to be like a, a base where you can put on a second bowl and finish a recipe. So rather than buying a full new uh, Thermomix pack, you'll be able to just buy literally the friend it's a cooking base so you can put your second bowl on there and finish off a recipe so even something as simple as you've made risotto it's going to cook for 20 minutes um you can take your bowl off your thermomix put it onto your thermomix friend finish off the cooking time it doesn't um it doesn't chop it's just really a, a it's a cooker so it'll let you do it's a maximum speed to um, and you can finish off your recipe. So it gives you the capacity then to use your Thermix and your second bowl and, you know, prepare that side dish or a dessert or finish off another recipe. So it's the friend. It's like the absolute companion for your Thermix if you're that custom that, you know, would dream of having two, two Thermomixes side by side. The friend is coming. So if you have a look, it is floating around Europe. Um, I love the way they get to try things first because by the time it gets to Australia, they've nutted out all the, you know, Whatever could they've nutted it all out? We get the fact we get it all when it's at its absolute best. So stay tuned. I believe um, I've heard March, March, April has been sort of the whispering date for us for Australia. Really excited about that one. Mm. Work with yeah. the TM5 or only the TM6? Oh, so it's compatible for the TM5 and the TM6. So either bowl will work on the base, which is awesome for everybody. Um, and you'll have the option of buying the friend with or without a second bowl. So if you're that, you know, Thermix customer that has two Thermixes, you might just, you know, you might want a, a, a third a third base, but um, great for people that have one and then you can, you've got that second bowl option to play around with, around with as well. Lovely. And the price, Amanda, someone's asked about the price. I think it's, someone's whispered about $800. That's the price we've heard. We haven't, it hasn't been yeah. confirmed yet, but um, yeah, stay tuned for that one. You'll definitely be hearing about that in the new year. So, and for the mix shop, um, what's happening too is um, check your emails and have a look at your newsletters because the 12 days of Christmas is starting on the 16th of November. For anyone that hasn't done that before, um, the actual newsletter went out last week. You do need to subscribe that you do want to be uh, notified. So it'll be 12 days of Christmas. Um, some mix shop items being released on sale. So, um, and they generally sell out once again, like, like firecrackers. So, and then the mix shop now, in case you haven't noticed, has some wonderful products. Um, we all tend to promote our own, we all use them. So there's things that we love. I noticed Beth used that jam funnel. I didn't, who thought you could use a jam funnel for so many things? I love the jam funnel, um, but um, there's pages and pages. So jump into the mix shop. Um, we do recommend you sign in as a customer and nominate your consultant because um, that, you know, you'll be connected with your consultant in those sales so they can also look after you. We kind of like to look in and see what you're purchasing and then we might connect with you and just see how they're going and maybe offer you some ID suggestions for some of those items as well. So there's books in there. There's a lots of cooking, um, you know, cooking accessories for your kitchen, your Theramix. Um, but yeah, lots of great ideas. And with Christmas coming, it could be a great space for you to hang out as well. 
So 12 days of Christmas, starting 16 November, you'll see a lot about that. And they're going to give you, there'll be all the Christmas prep coming. So all the things will start, you know, uh, showcasing your, your Christmas prep with your Thermomix as well, which we love. We do. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. All right, everyone. So I'm looking here. Um, who's asked about, so Sue's asked how much is a second bowl on its own? So Sue, a second bowl on its own is 385 for a team. Yeah, I've just five. been online. It's 365 online at the minute, I think. 375. 375. 375. We've got different prices. Yeah, it's, it's out of stock. Yes, it's out of stock. Uh -huh. yeah, I was about to say that. So it is out of stock. Oh. The only way to, to get one at the minute is um, through a, a purchase. But um, just keep your eyes on that, just like the blade covers out of stock. So these things come in and out all the time. It's really at the minute we've had problems with some of our shipping. But um, that's definitely... Sue's that's got definitely, the TM5 and they're 365 for the TM5. There you go. I'm online now. Um, so they're, they're in stock, Sue. So I'll chat to you afterwards you. if you need one. Now, Doris, I will. your consultant will have the link for the Cookie Do class. So just um, hang five for that one. It's a 12 o'clock session. We've seen that. Um, lay cover for the TM5 or the 6. Absolutely. Oh, you're a very quiet crowd tonight. Jump off your um, your mutes and, and go crazy and wild and say hi. <laughs> you're a bit late, Alison Cameron. <laughs> just daylight saving. Uh, uh, so Alison Cameron just joined and we're about to we're about to leave. Mm. She hasn't got a mic, mic video on. Did we ask Joe's question? What miso paste were we using? You did say that, didn't you, Adrienne? Health food store, absolutely for your misos. Um, um, where did I get mine? I got mine yep. from, um, I think I got mine from Leo's, but Toscano's has it. IGA. Any yep, any right. um, Asian supermarket? There's another one here. You can just use, which, you know, I've had for quite a while, and it's just a non-GMO modified. So I think that's important, just as long as you look for the non-GMO modified. Any other ideas out there that, that the customers would like to see? Class suggestions? Because we've um, got a big long list going, but we're always happy to um, offer what it is that you would like to see. So some things coming up will be definitely some Christmas making. Um, Christmas we've just definitely. been looking... Christmas, yeah. We've been looking at, you know, just some of the restrictions um, people are feeling about giving out gifts this year, but um, I think amongst your family it's fine. But, yeah, I think that sort of that idea of widespread gift giving, homemade goods, maybe with teachers and all that sort of thing is not going to be happening. But, of course, for ourselves, why not? So it's just, um, I don't actually drink, but this bottle is actually being kept from my sisters. They are called for ugly duckling. It's a cocktail, cocktail drinks. So I just um, gave it a quick, quick wash. Yeah. And, you know, when you have a bottle like this, you just keep it so, because it's just really nice and save you the money of throwing them in the bin. They look beautiful. It's called them. Ugly Duckling, I think. It's called Ugly Duckling. It's a cocktail drink. Mm. Do you buy it at the uh, bar at, at an alcohol shop, like a Dan um, Murphy's? Or no, I, it's actually my sister's um, partner. He drinks it, but he always pours it out. So I instead of throwing it in a bin and I just thought that with the gold lid on it, that was like Christmas thing. And you can actually get a tear and then just tag it. There you it. go. There yeah. you go, Jody. You need to go and buy some alcohol. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like a cocktail. So of course my ears pricked up. Thought, yes. <laughs> we know where your ears always are, Sally. Yes. Yeah. Very excited. I want to know where to buy it. We'll have to yeah. pop it in the link. Pop okay, in. sure. Thanks. All right, no, guys. Jo Jody's still there. She asked the question where the yeah you are, Jody. Yeah. So I'll, that's I'll where you send get the link. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. So that's um, the end of our uh, slow cooking blade covering uh, class, and we really thank you for joining us today. And um, we'll stay on till the last customer leaves. Any questions? But um, show the love to your consultants, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. See you, Tori. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
well done, team. I love the length of those classes. Definitely that hour works really well. Good class, girls. Good job. Thanks, Anne. Thank yeah. you, Anne. Anne. I think you need to clean your camera a little bit because is it Thanks, just Georgia. me seeing that's foggy? Thanks, Anne. Anne. Oh, yeah. 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 Is it just me? Your lens is a bit foggy. Mine? Yep. Yeah. You need a little oh. bit of a polish on your, on your yeah. lens there, Jen Jen. Mood lighting. Like mood lighting. My computer. <laughs> <laughs> the soft focus. Yeah, that's it. Yay. That's Is better. that better? I'll stop. Thanks, Thanks. I'll, stop. I'll stop the recording now too. So that's all good, guys. Thank you.